Welcome back to lecture number 4.5 on this lecture series on digital forensics with me, Joachim Sjöverstad from the University of Hovde. Uh, let's do a little commercial before we start. You know that we have, if you like this course, there is a lot of nice courses that we offer as campus and distance uh, on security and networking. And we also, we even have a master's in information security that is starting quite soon and uh, that will be uh, available as a distance program altogether, so if you're interested, you should go into www.his.se to read about what we have to offer. But before you do that, take a minute and watch this video on what I call uh, MRU stuff, uh, or basically most recently used stuff, which is another way that Microsoft tracks what a user's been up to and that can give us a nice information, nice information about how the computer's been historically historically used with the different uh, different forensic evidence and value, of course. So before we begin, uh, I just want to tell you that Microsoft stores basically whatever you do, uh, whatever you do, as we've seen with prefetch, shell bags, link case, and so on and so forth. Uh, using this uh, most recently used items is just not a way to see what a user has been up to. Uh, this, uh, this these artifacts are located in Windows registry and in the ntuser.dat file for uh, for each user. So it's also user specific, specific data. Uh, for the most part, and the way that you can uh, uh, that you can see that there is most uh, that something is holding this kind of most recently used uh, information is by uh, seeing the MRU uh, addition to some key. Uh, that's the most common way. So in uh, fundamentals of digital forensics, that this video le uh, lecture series is built. On. Uh, there is a table 4.1 that lists uh, some of these uh, most recently used keys. Uh, so, for instance, there are one for documents, for map network drive, uh, there is a cool one called Open Save PID MRU, and this is actually Windows tracking whenever the user is saving some file using the Save As dialog. And there is Lost Visited, which uh, tracks recently used applications and, and the folder path used by these. Um, these applications and and so on and so forth. There is a whole bunch of them, and so and they do work a little bit differently. But I'm going to look at, show you two use cases. Uh, and as always, if you're uncertain about how something actually works, you should put it to the test. Uh, so we're actually going to examine those uh, in a little virtual machine here, and we're going to use the tool that is called Registry Explorer. So there is a lecture later on on Registry, Registry Explorer. It's an open source tool for uh, interpreting Windows Registry Hives. And it's of course free for you to download. Uh, but I, first, before we begin, I want to show you the, uh, the the first thing I want to do is show you the structure of those items. So here you see that I have the ntuser.dat file open for a user and you can see already that I'm in recent docs and under recent docs if I just click recent docs there is one key for all different files so it's quite a long uh, quite a long listing and what I'm showing here is uh, in, a rec in a tab called recent documents this is actually Registry Explorer interpreting the MRU objects for us if we actually look at the data it looks a little bit differently and a little bit more hexadecimal so what I want to do is just click TXT here and I'm going to show you how these recent docs work because uh, as you can sh certainly understand here the different folders is uh, showing a subset of the different uh, recent doc items uh, separated on file type. So if I just quickly go to object here uh, you can see that what we actually have is two distinct types of objects. So first off we have those uh, uh, those entries which has a value name of a number. So we have 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 3. Uh, I'm not sure why the order happens like this, but what happens here is that whenever a, uh, a text file in this case is opened, it's inputted into these, uh, this recent docs listing. And the numbering is happening on a first come first serve basis. So the first file uh, and ending up here is called zero. The second one is uh, second is called one, and then two, and so on and so forth. That's all well and nice. The problem becomes when this list is stuffed, because when this list is stuffed, then there is a cycling that's going to start happening. And there is two things to know about this. First off, if a file 
uh, that is already in this listing is open again. So let's say we open number one, zero, we open number one, we open number two, we open number four, and so on and so forth. And then when we have those five in here, and then we open number two again, then the number for number two is not changed. So when we just look at them like this, the numbers doesn't tell us anything. It tells us that it's been open at some point, but it doesn't tell us the order. So to understand the order, we also need this MRU list. Uh, and if we look at the data section of the MRU list, we can see that it's in hexadecimal. And what I want to tell you is that each grouping here of one, two, three, four, uh, each grouping here of four uh, double hexadecimal digits is one entry telling you the order of things. So what this tells us is that the file with number three was opened first, then comes number five, then comes number four, and so on and so forth. And this is what is being interpreted for us if we go to recent documents. So if we go to recent documents here, you can see uh, a bunch of more information, but if we just look at the value names, we can see that we have have it listed on MRU position. That is that uh, list that we just talked about. You can see here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a consecutive list. But the value names, the values in which they appear, what they are named here, is as we expect 3, 5, 4, and so on and so forth. Uh, if we look fur further to one of the values, I just want to show you that it's written in uh, the data is written in hexadecimal, but it can be interpreted. So the data here for zero, for instance, holds a file name that is called to be deleted.txt. And it, when we go to recent documents here in Registry Explorer, it's in, uh, interpreted for us. So if I go to uh, the value that is named zero, I look in uh, recent documents, value named zero, that is called to be deleted. So that is this kind of MRU objects. I want to show you, show you another one because there is another way that the MRU objects can be uh, can be constructed in registry. And another another example then a use case is the map network drive MRU. Map network drive MRU tells uh, tells us the history of what uh, network drives that has been mapped. This is a much more convenient way because as you see here we have our values so we have the value names A, B, they work in the same way so whenever there is a new network share mapped it's going to be C, D, E and then it's going to recycle and if we remap B it's still going to be B so it's not going to change to an A so the value name doesn't tell us the order, but we have the MRU list that is written in a nice and convenient format this time. So you can just see value names are letters, and the MRU list is just a listing of uh, in which order the different uh, network shares were opened. So in this case, A was open first, then B was opened. Uh, if I were to reopen B, then the order here would change, so it would be BA instead. Uh, and also you can see that the data portion of the actual values here is convenient and easy to read. So what this gives us is a nice overview of what network shares or network drives that's been mapped to this computer. So that concludes this section on MRU. And uh, b before we end, just if you have a quick look here, you will see that we have run MRU uh, in registry, n nothing happening there on this computer. If we go file uh, or tool, we can go find. And then you can just do a search for MRU and you will see that there are lots and lots of MRU objects scattered across the Windows registry that are there for you to find and explore. So that's it for this lecture on MRU objects. If you want to have a more throughout description you can read in the book Fundamentals of Digital Forensics and when we get back we're going to discuss Tomcache and then USB history before we conclude this section on important forensic artifacts. And That's all for me for now. Thank you for listening.